We've taken a look at the motivation behind matrices. They're often used to organize data and we saw that you can add matrices and you can scale them. Um, now we're going to just be a little bit more formal and abstract and in introduce some terminology that helps you identify certain elements of a matrix and its size. And so our first definition here is the order of a matrix. So a matrix with m rows and n columns is called an m by n matrix and and the m by n is its order. So in our examples here below you'll note that this first matrix has two has two rows two rows and three columns so we would say that is a two by three a two by three matrix so its order is a two by three. Over here, the order would be well we have three rows and one column and so its order would be a three a three by one. Okay, so so again uh, the the naming of, of, of matrices and or the way to describe their size is to describe their order. So a two by three and a three by one, as soon as you specify that you know um, you know the size of the matrix and what it looks like. Um, now clearly that also means you know how many elements there are, right? Because if this is the number of rows and this is the number of columns then the number of, of elements would just be three time, uh, 2 times 3, which means there are 6 elements. And similarly here, there would be 3 elements because 3 times 1 is, is 3. Now how do we identify the elements in, this, in these matrices? In other words, if I wanted to draw your attention to the negative 2 in the first one, I could just say look at the negative 2, but if the matrix is bigger and there's many negative 2's, you'd want to know which one I'm looking at. And so that's why this naming system here is introduced. So an element is named in this fashion, A with an I subscript and a J subscript, where I is the element's row and J is its column. So for example, let's say uh, in matrix, the first matrix here, I tell you what, or ask you what is element A sub 1, 2, A sub 1, 2, well, that is the element in the first row and the second column. So the first row and the second column, if you look at it, I'm going to use green, here's the first row, there's the second column, it's pointing to negative 1. Uh, and similarly, you know, a sub 2, 2 would be the element that's in the second row, second column. And so that would be, in this case, second row, second column. That would be our zero. Okay. Um, <clears throat> over here, a 1, 1. A 1, 1 we would just call, or would be identifying, rather, the element in the first row in the first column, the only column there is, that would be 2. Um, A13 would be 4. And A22, two, two, notice, would not have an answer because uh, there, is, there aren't two columns in this matrix, so I can't refer to it. So there's just some basic terminology in terms of naming elements of matrices and their size. Here we're going to look at uh, adding matrices, which we've already done, um, so I'm going to kind of do this example uh, but without a calculator just so you can get a sense of what it looks like to add them. So uh, A plus B would be matrix A plus matrix B, and notice that you can really only add matrices if they have the same size. So let's note that. Uh, and by size I mean order. So you can only add matrices if they have the same order.
That is to say, they're the same. They have the same dimensions. All right, so that's important. If you're asked to add two matrices that don't have the same order, you don't have to do it because it can't be done. So adding matrix A plus matrix B is as simple as adding the corresponding entries. So we know the dimensions of our answer. It's going to have to also be a, a 2 by 3. Again, by the way, these are, let's, let's identify the dimensions here. This is a 2 by 3, and this is a 2 by 3. So this addition can take place. And we add them by just adding corresponding entries. So I'll add the 3 plus the negative 4, and that'll give me negative 1. I'll add the negative 1 and the negative 6 to give me negative 7. I'll add the 2 and the 8 to give me my 10. And now let's do the second row here. 4 plus 2 gives me 6. Negative 5 plus 4 gives me negative 1. And finally, negative 2 plus a negative 1 will give me a negative 3. Simple enough. So there's our answer. Let's look at this uh, last example, 2a minus 3b. So now we're, we're mixing uh, addition and subtraction of matrices with the scalar multiplication. So 2 times matrix A, so I'm going to actually write this out, 2 times matrix A would be 2 times... This matrix here, 3, negative 1, 2, 4, negative 5, negative 2. And then I'm going to subtract 3 times my matrix B, which is negative 4, negative 6, 8, 2, 4, negative 1. And so what I tried to motivate in the last video by using the example of a, you know, gaps inventory doubling, is that you just simply distribute this 2 to every single element here. Alright, so 2a would end up being uh, 6, negative 2, 4, and then 8, negative 10, negative 4. And over here, same thing, we'll distribute that 3. Now, I, there's a couple ways you can view this. You can you can distribute the positive 3 and then subtract all the entries. But I think it's better to view this as adding negative 3 times that matrix. In other words, you know, 4 minus 3 is the same as 4 plus negative 3. So it's better to do that, I think, and distribute this whole negative 3 to each, to each of these terms. And so by doing that, you get... But that's just me. I have a bias towards addition because I'm, a, you know, a positive person. <laughs> um... Negative 3 times negative 4 is 12, and then we get uh, 18, and then we get negative 24, negative 6, negative 12, and uh, positive 3. <clears throat> and then last, we just add corresponding entries. So I get 18, right, 6 plus 12 is 18, negative 2 plus uh, 18 is 16, and a 4 and a negative 24 is a negative 20, and then 8 and a negative 6 is a 2, a negative 10 and a negative 12 is a negative 22, and a negative 4 and a 3 is a negative 1. And so there's our final answer reduced. Again, the calculator is often used once we have matrices that are, you know, have big dimensions because obviously it's tedious to kind of go through this. But for small uh, matrices that, whose dimensions or orders are, are relatively small, it's almost not worth taking out the calculator. So you want to be able to handle, handle these uh, relatively simple computations just by doing it, doing it out. So there you have it. Um, you've got some definitions of the size of matrices, how to identify their elements, how to add them, and... Uh, add them combining scalar multiplication as well.